Good morning and welcome. Welcome to online yoga school's virtual studio. My name is Patoya and this morning I'll be guiding you through a yin sequence, an energizing yin sequence. As far as props, you may find a strap to be helpful today. I'll be doing a um, a lying quad stretch. So you may want to have um, a strap to help make that more accessible. And you also will need some blocks today. We'll be going into our low lunge, half split, as well as a bridge pose um, with legs extended. So preferably soft blocks um, for the bridge pose. If you like, you can have a bolster instead or a pillow would be just fine. A folded blanket. If any sensitivity is sometimes an issue, feel free to have a blanket nearby for low lunge as well as pigeon pose if you need it. All right, so let's get started with a few rounds, about 10 rounds of alternate nostril breathing. As long as to just get grounded. Just take a moment, come into Sukhasana or cross leg position. Find your neck or breath. Hold your right hand up or Feel free to use your left hand if you're left-handed and you're more comfortable. I'll be using my right hand. I'm gonna go ahead and bend your pointer, your index finger and your ring finger down. So your thumb that was gonna be used to seal your right nostril and your um, ring finger and pinky will be used to seal your left nostril or vice versa, of course, if you're using your left hand. All right, so we're going to do about 10 rounds. So we'll start by sewing the right nostril with your thumb. Take an inhale through your left nostril. Slow and deep. And at the top, go ahead and switch and seal your left nostril. And then exhale slowly out of your right nostril. Inhale through your right nostril, still sealing that left one. Hold it at the top long enough to switch and to seal the right nostril and then exhale out of the left. Okay, so that was one round, so let's continue that. So inhale through your left nostril. Switch and exhale out of your right. Allow your body to relax as much as possible. Maybe close your eyes. Inhale through the right nostril. And switch and exhale out of the left. Inhale through the left. Switch it at the top and exhale out of the right. Go ahead and continue at your own pace. And close your eyes or keep your gaze low. Relax on your shoulders. And just retaining your breath long enough at the top to make that switch. Mm -hmm. 
You may notice that one nostril is easier to breathe in and out of than the other. And that's normal. Mani Shadana or alternate nostril breathing is a good way to energize, good way to send fresh oxygen to your brain to help you think more clearly. Reduce brain fog. Just be stressed when you need it. And this is one of those practices that you can actually do at any time. So depending on what your intentions are, you can use it to give you an energy boost. And you can use it at the end of the day. So allow you to relax and get ready. Get settled for bed. On your next exhale out of your right nostril. Bring your hand down to rest on your thighs. And just find your natural breath. Take a moment to observe how you're feeling. Slowly open your eyes, and from here we're going to um, come into puppy pose or melting heart, as it's called the CN version. So come into tabletop with your knees under your hips, wrists under your shoulders. Then we're going to begin to walk your hands forward, leaving your knees under your hips, bring your forehead to the mat, begin to melt your, your heart down toward the mat. We're gonna be really resting your elbows on the mat today. And if you'd like to go deeper in this pose, Feel free to grab your blocks and you're going to put a block under each elbow. Put your forehead to the mat, bring your palms together and bring your hands back so that your thumb is touching your lower neck. And if you, if this is a little too intense for, to start, feel free to um, come into child's pose as an alternative. Today we'll be holding each pose for um, up to three minutes. But of course, if you at any time feel like you need to adjust or that you need to come out sooner, you always have that option to come out sooner. Find child's pose, 
into Supasana or a comfortable seat, whatever you feel like would be the best for you in that moment. And just focus your awareness within today. Observing your breath and how it feels as it travels all the way down through your chest into your belly. Feel that expansion and then observe how it feels as the breath exits your body. Noticing how the rhythm is natural. You don't have to do anything to force it. The exhale comes naturally after the inhale. And pressing yourself up, but sliding forward onto your belly. Here we're going to find our quad stretch. Spring your feet, maybe hip width apart, maybe a little bit wider. And here you can stay propped up on your elbows, or you can bring your head down to rest on the back of your hand. If you if needed, grab your strap. Wrap it around the, your left foot, or feel free to just reach back, and grab top of your foot, your toes. And hold it here. Keeping that left thigh as soft as possible, try to avoid contracting that muscle. Just allow it to relax.
And slowly releasing that left foot. Now take it over to the right. And while you're here holding, maybe take a moment to set an intention for your practice or for your day or even for your for the rest of your week. What is it that that you need or that you want to or how do you want this practice to affect the rest of your day or the rest of your week? And slowly release the left foot. And maybe just lay here for a second, resting your forehead down on the back of your hands and crack it out those. Take a few breaths. Allowing the natural breath to flow. And pressing up, let's find your downward facing dog. It's coming to tabletop. And we're going to be moving into um, pigeon pose. So feel free to come to three leg dog, or if you prefer to come into pigeon pose from um, tabletop, that's perfectly fine as well. If you're going for three leg dog, let's lift your right leg up. And on the exhale, bring that right knee through. That is placed behind your right wrist. And your right ankle is going to be somewhere behind your left hand, your left wrist. Use a block or a bolster or a pillow or a blanket if you need. 
Let's place under that left, the right hip. If you have a gap there, you can use the props to kind of help lift the floor to meet your hip. You can stay here. Or on an exhale, feel free to lower down to your elbows or sweeping swan. You can close your eyes while you're in these poses so that you can try to focus more on what's going on internally without any type of external distractions that may catch your eye. Inhaling deeply, energetically sending your breath down into that right hip. And slowly pressing yourself back up if you came to your elbows. Bringing that uh, right knee back. And maybe taking a moment in tabletop to possibly maybe extend that right knee back. Take some hip circles. Whatever feels good. To that hip. And when you're ready, we'll take our swan pose on the left. Squaring your hips so that they're both facing the top of the mat. And if you'd like, coming down 
to your elbows. And anytime if you feel pain or tingling, make sure to back out of the pose a bit. We'll come out completely. Finding your edge does not mean overdoing it. So you want to honor your body, honor where you are. Sometimes what feels good one day can feel not so good the next. So we always want to honor how we're feeling in that moment and not based on what we think we should be able to do. And slowly pressing up. Up again, finding tabletop and extending that leg. Some circles. And from here, we're going to find our downward facing dog. Pressing the hips up. Slowly walk your feet towards the top of your mat to find your dangling pose. It's one of my favorite energizing poses. And also, it's a nice release to my spine. We're keeping a slight bend in the knees, or, or actually bend as deep as you feel as comfortable and bring your feet as wide, hip width or wider. Sending your hips up, grabbing each elbow, allowing your head to hang heavy. But making sure that your feet are grounded, your heels and your toes grounded to the mat. Maybe sway a little side to side, if that feels good. Uh, 
finding your way to center. We're here for just a minute. Slowly bring your fingertips to the mat. Now I'm going to step the right foot back and come into a low lunge. Just bring that knee down. If you need the padding under your knee, go ahead and grab that. Grab your blocks. On whichever level feels right, higher or lower. With your uh, left knee over your left ankle. And try to allow your hips to kind of melt down towards the mat, extending up through your spine. From here, we're going to move into a half split. So straighten your left leg. And your right hip is going to be aligned with your, with your right knee. Flex your toes up towards you. Or if you prefer, you can keep it straight. And your blocks. I'm going to go to a lower level here. This one's hinge, you can definitely stay up higher. Or if you don't need the blocks, you could just bring your fingertips down to the mat. That looks just fine as well. And I apologize for all the clicking sounds that you may hear throughout the practice. I have four guinea pigs and sometimes when they drink water, it can sound very aggressive. Release any tension and soften your jaw, and your face muscles. If you feel yourself clenching, focusing on your breath, focusing on the stretch that you may be feeling on the back of that left leg.
So if you're familiar with the Ujjayi breathing or ocean breath, maybe activate your Ujjayi breath softly. Inhaling deeply through your nose, contracting your throat, and exhale. Or you can take long, deep breaths into your belly. time to kind of ease into it and to allow your body to naturally know allow your hips to naturally widen a bit. You know, find yourself sinking maybe a little, a little bit more as we hold the pose. to avoid sinking into your shoulders, standing up to your spine all the way through the crown of your head. Breathe to activate that giant breath through each pose. Keep the fur. Slow deep breaths. Slowly pressing back for half split, adjusting your blocks needed, adjusting your foot, the right foot if needed as well, folding as deep as feels right for you. So keeping your spine straight, trying to avoid browsing, using your blocks to help prop yourself up. Trying to relax that right leg as much as possible. Allow the stretch to go 
young muscle. Forward to come out your half split. Let's come to you seated. Maybe facing the top of your mat, the bottom of your mat, or butterfly pose. Let's bring the soles of your feet to touch. Bring your feet as close or as far to you as feels comfortable for you, depending on how close they are, you may feel stretch more in the inner thighs, if they're further away, and you feel it on the outer. But whatever feels right, keep grabbing your ankles, taking a deep inhale, and on the exhale, allow your spine to roll over into a forward fold. Allow your legs to relax and your hands to relax. So we're not pulling here or forcing anything. We're just taking a, a fold and just allowing the muscles to relax. Your head to come in if you'd like. You can definitely use a, a block or props to support your head. Just your forehead on a block. You also allow your head to hang heavy. your palms on the mat and walking the palms backwards towards you to slowly roll up. Use your hands to help bring your knees back together and from here extend your left leg straight out. Bring your right knee sole to the mat. 
Use your left hands, maybe grab around that with me. On the inhale, extend up through your spine. And on the exhale, take a twist, gazing over that right shoulder. And exhale, release back to center. Take it to the other side. So extending the right leg, bringing that left knee in. Grabbing, grabbing your left knee with your right hand. Extending up, nice and tall. And on the exhale, and twist towards the right. release. Right here we will find a reclined position and grab your block or your bolster for our bridge pose with legs extended. So bending your knees to press your hips up, place your block or your prop under your hips, maybe right, right at your sacral bone. And if you're using a block, use it on whatever level feels the best. From here, you want to extend both legs out. to feel a gentle opening on the front of your body, extending your arms overhead. Feel free to take a traditional bridge pose as well if you'd like. Just leaving your knees bent, knees over your ankles. Go ahead and bring your feet back in. Lift your hips to move the block. And from here, we're going to find a banana pose. A nice side stretch on the side of the body. So uh, lift your hips and adjust your hips over towards the right side of your mat, maybe an inch or so. Expand your feet out. Walk your feet over towards the left side of your mat. With your arms overhead, lift and curve your upper body towards the left as well. Maybe grabbing onto that right wrist, creating the banana shape, or crescent moon shape. Energetically sending your breath into that right side body. like, cross your right ankle over your left. If you just cross your ankles, go ahead and uncross them. Walk your feet back to center and walk your upper body to center as well. Adjust your hips back to center and then over towards the left. 
Extend your legs, walk your feet over towards the right, then your upper body. Long deep breaths here. If you chose to cross your leg, once again, go ahead and uncross those ankles. Walk your feet to center, upper body to center, adjust your hips back to center. Bend your feet about as wide as your mat. And we're just gonna windshield wiper our legs to the left and then to the right. So it's allowing your legs to fall over towards the left. Your shoulders down to the mat. Maybe you wanna gaze over towards the right or you can gaze straight up if you like. And bring your knees back up and allow them to fall over towards the right. And bringing your knees back up. Let's go ahead and extend your legs for Shavasana, our final pose. Bringing your arms out to each side. Just allow yourself to take up space. Tucking your shoulder blades under, palms facing up. Here for just a moment, just to allow your practice to really sink in. Give yourself a moment to observe what feels good, what feels different. If you haven't already, go ahead and close your eyes or soften your gaze. Begin to deepen your breath. Extend your arms overhead for a nice long stretch, spreading your fingers wide, pointing your toes. Slowly blink your eyes open and turn to one side to press yourself up to a comfortable seat. Let's bring the palms together at your heart center. And we'll end our practice with a deep cleansing breath in through your nose and out of your mouth. Inhale. Thank you for allowing me to guide you through your practice today. Namaste. Thank you.